Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we took out Team Galactic at the Valley Windworks, and in this episode, it's Friday. Friday. Gotta get down on Friday, because this dude's here. I never actually explained this, but this dude right here, this is Drifloon, uh, will only appear on the Valley Windworks route on a Friday after you have defeated Team Galactic. And if you reset the clock within... 24 hours of him showing up, or her showing up in this case, um, then you will not be able to catch it. And I'm really hoping that I don't one-shot this thing with Water Pulse. Um, the thing about Drifloon is that A, it's gonna be the fourth member of my team, as I said in the last video. Um, but I unfortunately had issues with getting it, and would not have been able to get the video up for a number of days, which would be, have been until today, um, actually. Uh, I was gonna use Mud Bomb on it, but that's not gonna do anything. Um, yeah, off screen I bought a bunch of Pokeballs, by the way. Just thought I'd note that. You could try the Premier Ball, because who doesn't like white things? That sounded really white power ish. I didn't mean for that to sound white power ish if it did. Um, but yeah, Drifloon is a ghost flying type Pokemon. A g g g g ghost! Yes. Um, and it is. It's a pretty good Pokemon. I've never actually used one, but I've heard pretty good things about it. Um, and its defenses kind of suck, yeah? But it makes up for that with having a buttload of HP. Like, if you thought Shellos had a lot of HP, man. Or, like, if you thought Turtree had a lot of HP, oh, man, you were in for another thing coming. Especially when this thing evolves. Because of the way it floats aimlessly, an old folktale calls it a signpost for wandering spirits. Um... So you do remember a Pokedex entry, something along the lines of, like, it carrying children away? And, uh, if you recall in the last episode, I asked for nickname suggestions, and I kind of feel bad for, like, taking one, because I only actually gave, like, one day's notice for, uh, suggesting nicknames, seeing as though, like, I was gonna catch it in this episode. But, um, I got linked to a site, uh, by the Cholesterol Gamer. I never know if it's Cholesterol Gamer or THE Cholesterol Gamer. And he had- well, the site had a bunch of really cool nicknames for- for all these things. I'm gonna name it Zep, because that was on that page and I kinda liked it. Uh, it was really the only one that stood out to me. Um, but let's take a look at our new Drifloon, shall we? Um, it actually only has two more HP than Shellos, which is kinda worrying me. Um, in the sense that it might have a low HP nature. I'm not even sure if HP is affected by nature. But yeah, as you can see, kind of crappy defenses, but it's got decent speed and decent special attack. Uh, especially if you compare it to Shellos right now. It's got, like, a little bit higher. It's not, definitely not bad in terms of, like, stats. Um, but yeah, when it evolves, holy crap, it gets a lot of HP. I'm just gonna go and heal up, and then I'm gonna meet you at the entrance of Eterna Forest where we ended the last video. So I will be one sec. Okay, let's go into the forest, <laughs> shall we? Um, what the balls? There's a trainer, like, right away. Hello, my name's Cheryl, and you are? Oh, so your name is Kevdog. I'm sincerely glad to meet you. Sincerely glad? If you have to say that you're sincere, then you're probably not actually sincere. Kevdog, may I ask a big favor of you? Oh, here it comes. I want to get through this forest, but I'm afraid of doing it alone. I've heard that there's a sinister group of people called Team Galactic about. I think they, there'd be safety in numbers. Please, may I go with you? I don't know how old this woman is, but she is definitely more than a little bit creepy. I'll keep your Pokemon in perfect health. And that is why this area kicks ass. Um, so now, you have your very first partner trainer stuck with you. And I feel as though it is worth it to show wild battles here, because... You run into wild double battles with Pokemon, and in order to actually catch anything here, you have to take out one of the wild Pokemon that's on the other side. I'm not going to bother to fight any of these things, because in all honesty, I don't feel like it's worth the experience or the time. Um, but in order to catch something, you have to only have one wild Pokemon on the other side. Right here is Moss Rock. Um, if you have an Eevee at this point in the game, which I don't know how you could, but unless by trading... Um, you can go and you can evolve it into a Leafeon by evolving it by, well, by leveling it up by that stone. Uh, Leafeon's an okay Pokemon. Um, I've never really been too big into the grass types other than, like, this starter because it kicks ass. Um, mostly because they don't really have that great of a type coverage that's not covered by, like, water and electric types. Uh, basically, like, everything that they're good against 
is covered by those two types. I, I'm not sure if it's everything, but it's pretty close. Um, so if you have a water type and an electric type, you're pretty well set. Um, now, I don't have an electric type, so that it kind of screws you over a little bit for, like, fighting Pokemon like Gyarados, because it, they can be a lot more difficult. Wow, that did very little. I'm kind of surprised about that. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Leafeon's a pretty good Pokemon. It's really defensive, which I kind of like. I'm not really sure... Like, because I've sort of rethought what I like in terms of Pokemon. Holy crap, that did a lot of damage. Um, I've sort of rethought what I like in terms of Pokemon as of recently. And, um, basically, like, I've I've rethought, like, okay, do I like um, Pokemon that are sweepers, like, high speed, high attack, or do I like really bulky Pokemon? And, I don't know, as of late, I've sort of been leaning towards the bulky Pokemon, just because that's sort of where, like, the metagame for uh, Pokemon... Forget a move. I can get rid of, um, rid of. I'll get rid of Harden because I literally never use that. Um, but yeah, um, in the metagame in Gen 6, uh, Bulk is your best friend. They built a lot of really good bulky Pokemon in Generation 6, and that is like the name of the game right now is who can have the bulkiest Pokemon. And whoever has the bulkiest Pokemon kicks ass. Um, now this person right here that we're battling with, they have a Chansey, as you could probably see. Um, it knows, like, Soft Boiled and Egg Bomb, and I don't really know what else. Uh, but if it dies, it's her only Pokemon, so you're basically stuck with one Pokemon in a double battle if your uh, teammate's Pokemon dies, which is a little bit of a bummer, but, eh, I mean, it's not too big of a deal. This thing takes forever to die anyways, because it's a frickin' Chansey. It's got, like... Actually, let's see how much HP it has. I, I can't check right now. Crap, I forgot. Like, not a lot of people know this, and I didn't know this until, like, a long time into my Pokemon career, but if you press Start while you're, like, selecting your move, you can see how much HP you have as opposed to, like, the HP gauge. And she has 130 HP at level 20, which is kind of ridiculous. It's, it's not like, holy crap, but it's, like, it's getting up there to the point where that's getting a little ridiculous. Actually, I guess... Chansey is the second biggest HP stat of any Pokemon in the game. Um, so yeah, it, it, you pretty much can't get higher than that at level 20. Because that, that's aiming for like, I don't know, it's close to 700 HP at level 100. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but as you could probably tell, this area, like this forest area is really good to grind in. And I really recommend like going and battling all the trainers that you can find while you still have this person with you. Because you will get all of the experience from these battles. They don't... She doesn't take any. And she fully heals your Pokemon after every battle. So I'm going to switch Snuggles up to the front here. I don't know what Zep knows, actually. I know it can learn Fly once it evolves, but I don't think it can learn Fly until then. It's got kind of a crappy moveset for now, but... Eh. It could... It will survive for a little bit. I don't really know what I'm saying right now. See, I find... I find talking over... Uh, like commentating Pokemon videos is a lot more difficult than commentating like Donkey Kong 64 um, Because I don't know I just don't feel the need to talk over a lot of these battles because they're like it's Just literally like fighting a trainer. It's not really a big deal or anything like that Plus a lot of these battles take like a really long time uh, So it can get a little tedious after a while I figured I'd stick snuggles up to the front of the party just because we're gonna be using snuggles for the next gym and I want it to learn a decent fire type move hopefully by the time that it goes to the next gym okay so that Abra knows hidden power fighting and this one knows hidden power fighting great uh, so at least I don't have anything that's weak to fighting right now yet because hint hint there's gonna be something coming up that's kind of weak to fighting uh, but that's not gonna be for quite a while so don't worry about it um, but yeah in this forest, you can catch lots of cool Pokemon. You can catch, like, Mistrevis and Murkrow. And I think that's, like, this is, like, the only place that you can catch those two Pokemon. There's also a mansion near the end that's kind of cool. Um, basically, like, you go and, like, you can catch... I, I don't know. You can catch Rodom there. Uh, I think you can catch a bunch of ghost types, too, like Ghastly. And I think you can catch Mistrevis there, too, but I'm not entirely sure. I'd, I would have to double check that for sure, but 
yeah, I, I don't know. There's lots of cool Pokemon in this forest, and it's a really cool area because you get to go and go through in double battles and stuff like that, and you get a ton of experience. It's just, I don't know, I really like it. A lot of people are sort of like, oh, it's kind of tedious, but I don't know. I just, I like this generation. Sue me. And trust me, like, this is, this is like one of my least favorite places in the game, like right here, because, like, the battles take so long. It's like, Pokemon, whatever the fuck, what was that game? Pokemon Coliseum, where like every battle is a double battle. Um, but, I mean, people like that game, why don't they like this section of this game? Holy crap, three speed, that's actually not bad. Yes, Flame Wheel, it's the move that I've been waiting for, and the move that will I will get rid of Growl for, because who in their right mind will use Growl in like a competitive match? Like, like could you imagine bringing a Pokemon and using Growl and the person on the other side will probably look at you and be like, what the actual fuck are you thinking? Like, it's just so ridiculous of a move to be using. Um, now these guys, all the non-required battles in this area I'm going to be cutting out just for sake of, like, it, keeping the time lower. So, unless something interesting happens, I'll meet you after this battle. Hmm, I guess we haven't seen this Pokemon before. This is Burmy. It's a very unique Pokemon in that, um... There are three different forms, and it have, has three different types based on the form. Um, well, it'll always have the main bug type, but um, I think the one we battled there was like part ground type. There's also one that's part psychic type, and there's one that's part steel type. Um, personally, I like the one that's part psychic type the best, because it's weak to itself. I just sort of always find that interesting, but... Yeah, I, I don't know, it's kind of a crappy Pokemon anyways. For competitive matches, it's so annoying to fight against. But, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's it's not that great of a Pokemon, especially this, the part Steel type one, because odds are you're probably going to be using a Fire type against it anyways, because it's part Bug, and the Steel subtype is not really doing it any favors in that term. Oh, okay, Snuggles grew to level 16 there. Almost got killed by itself because it hit itself in confusion like three times in a row and that did that much damage. It's kind of ridiculous. Whatever though, I'm not too worried about it. Snuggles kicks ass either way, except when it's confused when it doesn't kick ass. But but yeah, I, I actually really like Ponyta. It's a really cool Pokemon. Um, I know a lot of people that are just sort of like on the fence about it. It's one of those Pokemon that I never really bothered to try that much, but yeah, I kind of like it. It's 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 pretty decent. This forest is strange, you know. It seems to fill me with energy. Energy to come. Ha me. 3 episodes later. Ha! Actually, that dude was kind of weird. I I think that was actually a chick, but it was kind of weird that they were like floating the Pokeball above them in like a spirit ball fashion. I, I don't know why I notice these things, it's just, like, yeah, I, I just sort of draw the relation between, like, Dragon Ball Z and, like, everything. It's funny because, um, that, that, uh, anime expo that I went to, uh, between part 6 and part 7, um, which that's, that's a very bad way of describing it, but that's how I think of it, is, like, I, between recording part 6 and recording part 7 of this LP, that's, that's the way I think about it, um, but anyways, that anime expo that I went to, basically, like, the only animes that I know are, like, Naruto, Bleach, and Dragon Ball. And, like, everything that I saw with, like, Dragon Ball Z, I was like, oh my god. And everybody's like, oh, I don't fucking know that. Like, because cause nobody, like, actually really watches Dragon Ball Z, seriously. So, yeah, I, I don't know. People didn't really seem too, too into it, like I was. I, I'm pretty much the only person that really cares about it. Man, I don't know why, but I've been, like, super tired, like, all day. It's nuts. And I, I don't really know why, because I woke up and I got, like, a normal amount of sleep. Like, I got, like, six hours of sleep, which is very normal for me. Oh! Oh, you're just gonna leave me now. Oh, there's the exit! I'm so relieved we finally got out of here. I would have never been able to get through this by myself. Thank you so much, Kevdog. This is a token of my appreciation. Please accept it. And we get a Soothe Bell, which is very, very good if you have a Pokemon that evolves by happiness, which I never will in this playthrough. I'm sure we'll meet again somewhere. Bye for now. Okay, bye, I guess. I, I don't really know what was the deal with that. Um, I don't remember what I was talking about before. Oh, yeah, I'm just really tired. 
And like, yeah, I usually only get like six hours of sleep in a night, but that's, I, I don't know, like for some reason today I woke up and I was like, ugh, so tired. I don't want to live on this planet anymore because there are scantily clad, dressed 14 year old children. I don't know. These fishermen, I always like to fight them, but they never really seem to have any interesting Pokemon. Like, this dude's got a fucking Goldeen here. It's like, who cares? Like, Goldeen is a lot more useful in, in an actual Pokemon game than it is in Smash Bros. But still, I mean, it still kind of sucks. Um, Seeking is a pretty good Pokemon, but Goldeen itself is kind of crappy. There's a point later in the game where there's like these three or four trainers that I always like to rebattle over and over again, and one of them's got like a Goldeen that gives like an absurd amount of experience, and it also knows like Horn Drill. It's like level 27. I don't know exactly what level it actually is, but it's like it it knows Horn Drill, like a one hit KO move. So if you're under leveled when you fight it, odds are it's probably gonna like one shot at least one of your Pokemon. I don't know why when computers use, like, those one-hit KO moves, like, they always seem to hit way more than, like, if you use them. It kind of sucks, in my opinion, but whatever. I'm gonna switch Zep up to the front of the party, uh, because she is the only one that is underleveled. How many of my Pokemon are actually female? Because I noticed that, like, usually, usually, like, you don't get a lot of female Pokemon, but I seem to, like, recall getting quite a few. This is gonna be a douchebag that just has a bunch of Magikarps. I like that entering battle sprite thing that that Zep has. That's what I like about Pokemon, is that they took far longer than like most other games to get into like a 3D model kinda kinda deal, as opposed to like just sprites that like move. And I can really, really respect that because they didn't feel the need to like embrace the newest technology or anything like that. Like if you look at this, this is like this looks way better than like an N60, like most N64 games, but like it's it's in 2D, and instead of like going and making their game in 3D, like Super Mario 64 DS, which is basically like the same, very similar graphically to uh, Super Mario 64. I think it's a little bit better, but it's also more pixelated. Um, but yeah, if you compare it to that, I mean, this game in my opinion, looks like leaps and bounds better than Super Mario 64 DS. And this game also looks leaps and bounds better than Generation 5 of Pokemon. Like, if you look at that, you would honestly look and be like, were they even trying? Because the back sprites for like literally every Pokemon, like the pixels are like four times the size of the pixels in this game. Like they're like two pixels by two pixels for each pixel on the back sprite. Like, it literally looked like they weren't even trying. And the game looks like crap in comparison to this one. It's like, I don't even know what they were doing with those games. Because, yeah, Generation... Like, uh, Generation 5. Uh, the first games in Generation 5, like Black and White, they weren't terrible. They just had a story that I really just didn't give a crap about. And the battle system was really slow. So it was like, eh. But, like, Black and White 2... They had all of the problems that Black and White had, times like a billion, because they made you do like sections that should have been optional and side sections, like the stupid Pokestar Studios thing that like they forced you to do in until like you were able to leave the first island or whatever. Um, they forced you to do that, which was stupid. And there was also the thing in like the farm where you had to hunt down like the team plasma dude or whatever I, I don't really remember it was something on a farm like right at the start of the game and it really was just like why is this in your game this is so boring um, and like yeah you could argue that like yeah the long battling sections in this generation are like kind of boring too but I like them I think the best part about Pokemon is battling and I don't really give a crap about the story usually I don't know but for some reason the story in this particular Pokemon game I find myself, like, really drawn into, like, the whole Team Galactic, like, subplot that they put in. I think that's, like, way more interesting than, like, the rival team in any other game. Um, and, yeah, as I said, like, Gen 1 and 2, Team Rocket's, like, a bunch of thugs. Um, I was playing, like, Generation 6, and I saw Team Flare, and I never talked about it in that one episode where I talked about, like, all the different, uh, teams. Uh, but I saw Team Flare, and I'm just like... Why do you exist? 
Like, literally. You exist to, like, just tr a attempt to, like, kill all the people on the planet. But, like, seriously, why do you exist? Like, they're the lamest team design. They're even lamer than Team Plasma. Like, Team Plasma was like, oh, we're gonna, like, fake trying to be the cool guys and actually be the bad guys and stuff like that. And it's like... It's basically like if the Tumblr people turned out to be, like, the Nazi party, essentially. Um, but... But, like, Gen 6, it was like... Team Flare was just sort of there fucking shit up. And, like... They were just sort of like, their presence was just, it brought terror onto people for no reason in particular. Um, it's like, I watched this movie, I, I, this isn't like it at all, but it made me think about it. Um, I watched this movie yesterday, Dan in Real Life, and I saw it on Netflix, I'm like, ooh, it's a comedy. And I didn't realize that it was also subbed, like, romantic movies or whatever. So it wasn't really that funny, but it was, it was kind of okay. And, like... If you don't want to hear about what the movie's about, just skip ahead. I'll put a note in the video where to skip to. But, like, the entire plot of the movie was, like, the dude wa runs into this girl in a bookstore, and he falls in love with her, like, instantly. And it's his brother's girlfriend, and he has no idea. And, yeah, it was... It was just sort of, like, ugh. And, and at the end, like, they he finds them, like, making out in a bowling alley and he punches his brother in the face, and then suddenly, his family's all like, you should go for her, and like, they're all supportive, even though like, everybody fucking hated him like 30 seconds earlier, and it was just, it was just sort of stupid, like, I just, like, everybody just like, sort of instantly forgave him, and then, like, the end credits, there was the wedding, and it's like, wait, what the fuck? I thought like, I thought everybody hated you for like, going after this girl, and you're just like, yeah, whatever. I don't fucking care. And his family's just, like, all supportive and whatnot. Even though they were, like, dicks to him, like, five seconds earlier. Like, I don't understand that. Seriously, if I did that to, like, my sister's boyfriend, that's a bad example because I'm not gay. And she's not gay either. But, like, if I had, like, a brother, like, a real brother, because I have a half-brother, but I've never actually met him. Uh, but if I did that to a brother... This would be fucking, like, feud in the family for, like, years and years. And, like, literally, it took him, like, 30 seconds to get over it. He's like, if it was anybody but you. And then gets in the car with some bimbo from earlier in the movie. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, like, literally, I, that was probably the only movie I've sat there just being like, what, wait, what the fuck? Why, why do you just suddenly forgive this guy? Like, I don't understand. But that's, that's just something about human nature that I just don't get. Anyways, we're in a turn of city right now. I just sort of looped around there to see if there were any items. You motherfucker, why are you in the streets? Hey, you. Yeah, you trainer. Ugh, never mind. You look tough. I won't take... Uh, I'll just let you keep your Pokemon. Carry on. Wow, you sound a little bit, like, on edge there, dude. It feels great riding a bike with the wind in your face, doesn't it? Yeah, it probably does. I don't know. I'm gonna end the video here because... In all honesty, the next thing to do is fight the gym, and I want to leave that for the next episode. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.